What's up, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I want to talk to you about YouTube TV. You can see the app that I have right here. I'm just filming my iPad mini. The TV, the iPad, and my phone. The experience is pretty similar across them, but I will tell you what some of the things that I like and things that I dislike about this and why it kind of took the front place in the running for my cord cutting and then kind of quickly snapped to last place. Uh, first of all, as I want to show you here that there is an app for the iPad. I've gone ahead and downloaded it, installed it. I've used this quite a bit. I've used the web interface on the computer and I've used the uh, Sling TV and Direct TV and then uh, on my iPhone as well. So first of all, this is what the app looks like. It's pretty clean. It looks a lot like YouTube, you know, the app that you might know. And one of the things that I really was intrigued by is actually a fairly robust channel offering for the $40 a month that it costs, including some of your local channels. Now, what I will say, if I hit the live tab here, and so what you do get is a kind of a channel guide like this, and it kind of explodes out for the, the channel line that you're on. What you will see here, though, is only like the next hour or two, you can't scroll ahead. That's a big loss. I, I just don't understand why they don't do that. Now, you might say that's not, is it the way that is on the TV and on the other apps? Absolutely, and even on the website, which is totally weird to me that they only show you the next hour or two. Uh, you know, that every other channel guide allows you to kind of scroll into the future. Now, if I touch on like TVS like this, yeah, I can go ahead and go further, but I just don't understand why that's not a piece of the channel guide, right? Like, as you can see here, I can keep going out and out and out, and uh, that's all well and good, but on the channel guide especially, you know, not only, I guess you could say, I'm, you know, you're on live TV, the issue is I only care about what is truly live, but there's just a lot of things that you discover by saying, oh, look, that's coming up in an hour or two hours or tomorrow or whatever it might be. So um, kind of a big miss there, but I kind of get maybe they're trying to force the future on you and say, hey, live TV is just that live. You shouldn't really care about anything in the future. You can get it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, the thing that um, I like about that is, again, $40, local channels, um, pretty good selection, but they don't really have any tiers or packages like DirecTV and Sling. So kind of a pro con there is you get a lot, but the con is that you can't uh, upgrade to something that's maybe more robust or more appropriate for you. One of the unique cool things about this is that when you stop on a channel in the guide, it will automatically play the live stream from that channel. So it's kind of a nice to have a little preview of what you're going to be watching if you want to stop there. Now the big, big pro is that you get unlimited DVR. And I've gone ahead and I just, I've been tapping a lot of things and trying to DVR stuff to kind of test this out because I, <laughs> there are some exciting things about it and then some stupid things about it, all right? So the cool thing about this DVR is that it truly is unlimited and I've tried to record a bunch of stuff um, and I've tapped, you know, and kept things and then I watched them and then I didn't delete them and it, it totally seems like it's legit. Now the problem is, let me go here. So I was uh, tapping away on like the, um, the Disney channel here because they have a lot of serialized TV. And what I've noticed is that if you do tap like the record button, so this will be a little record icon, and it's a stop button right now, basically, if I want to stop it. But like, let's take a look at this, Girl Meets World. What I'll do is I'll scroll down here and you'll see that it's just like the whole, well, season essentially, right? So if I'm on an episode and I tap record, it just records everything. And that's because I don't think it's really recording anything, it's just, you know, all queued up in YouTube's digital system. And so what they do is when you say, hey, record, in this case, Girl Meets World, it's just gonna say, um, any season you wanna see is available because they probably have it. I, now, I actually have no idea why this only has season one or whatever, or two like this, and I have no idea how the show works, but, you know, for whatever reason, it never gives you kind of the typical ask of, do you wanna record new episodes? Or all episodes it just records and shows you everything now it makes a little more sense on movies right if there's a movie or something like this and you start it there's only gonna be one instance of it which is great and then like I said you can just tap this button up here remove good data die hard if you want to not um, watch it so okay right oh, on Step Brothers I actually <laughs> recorded that because I actually do want to watch that again one of the greatest movies of all time Probably second to Ace Ventura. All right, so 
that's interesting, right? Because to me, it's not really DVR. It's more of just like subscribing to a YouTube channel. That's how, kind of how I express it is that um, it's not really, you're not really controlling episode time, uh, actual viewing experience like you are on a DVR and like you think about it. This is just more of like bookmarking or subscribing to a channel or a feed or a page, okay? So that's kind of a big difference, which is why I think they make it unlimited DVR because they're really not recording your content and keeping it somewhere, right? Okay, I'll get off that. Now, one of the best things about YouTube TV is... Um, especially if you have a large house and you want to stream, I think it'll support up to six accounts, so that's kind of a bigger deal. And uh, it's kind of nice that, especially on the unlimited DVR piece, that it separates out your recordings by account. Now, one of the things that's a little weird is if I go up here, let's say to Point Break, and this is probably gonna get me demonetized. Um, so I actually did turn this on and was watching it. And I watched it actually on the computer and I watched it a little bit here to kind of see what the differences are. You can see it looks a lot like YouTube. I can kind of shrink it down. It goes to this little, little bar there, but what you can't do here is if I tap on this, usually I can go on these ellipses and I will get things like playback speed. It does not appear here. Now that's a little weird because when I was on the computer, I could actually speed this up. For example, I have Step Brothers up here running on my computer in the Google Chrome browser, as you can see here. And if I go down here to the menu bar, I can actually go to that little gear icon like you can on any YouTube video and go to speed and hit double speed. And now the sucker is playing at uh, twice the regular speed, which is awesome for crushing out, like I said, uh, slower moving shows or documentaries, or even just kind of playing things that you really enjoy, but at a higher speed. So I really like that. That is a huge, huge advantage for recorded uh, video on YouTube TV, but it only works on the web interface. So really weird that it's a miss here, that the, the variable playback speed is not here. And I was thinking, you know, it's not a technical issue because the YouTube app itself has variable playback speed. So I, I'm not sure what the deal is with that by having it on online, but not here. One of the things I want to do here is just kind of keep this open for a second because I can maximize it. And uh, good thing it's still running. And then if I hit the home button, I want to show you what happens. Boom, <laughs> nothing, right? Which is also weird to me because things like, oh, the YouTube Red app, is basically like a subscription to YouTube so that when you do minimize things, it'll continue to play or PMP or play in the background. And so the funny thing to me is if you're subscribing to YouTube TV, you know, which is actually more than YouTube Red, you actually don't get the same functionality in this app. So it's kind of uh, frustrating that I wouldn't have the picture in picture, be able to watch things, you know, on my iPad here. And then if I extend that a little further, let me just op try to open up my web browser here. All right, we'll open up the web browser. All right, so I've got this, right? I'm doing a little reading. I've got YouTube TV playing, and I want to dock this bad boy. Dock it, right? Dock it over here. Nothing. I can't actually do it. And the reason I brought that up is because so many times, you know, I want the work or the website that I'm fooling around with to be more front and center than you know the TV or the video that I'm watching. And so this is a big miss, especially compared to the DirecTV Now app, which not only goes P and P, but that gives you a lot of flexibility in kind of controlling the size and swiping off the screen completely. Um, and it's just a little weird to me. Summary, my issue here is that YouTube should probably be setting the standard. Google should be setting the standard in terms of streaming television. And I kind of get, like I said, why they're kind of forcing the future on this and, and kind of treating the live experience not quite like cable and kind of extending beyond that. But I think they should make that a little bit more familiar to people than, than they are. For $40, you, you definitely get a lot of stuff. As you can see, there's a, there's a bunch of channels, uh, including, you know, things like... Uh, NBC Sports Chicago, which is not on every streaming network. But at the same time, you know, it's it's got a long way to go. I paid for one month of it to try it out. I don't know if they have a trial, you know, period anymore. I guess my expectations were a lot higher on it. So that's my thoughts. YouTube TV app, Peter Von Pandau.